is Kemi Badenoch torpedoing her own leadership campaign. Um, the four candidates for Tory leader are trying to make an impression on members at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham. Very strange bunch of people to try and um, make an impression on, I'm sure. Um, Badenoch is coming under fire for these comments made over the weekend. What about things like maternity pay? I mean, we have one of the lowest rates in the OECD of maternity pay in this country. Changing that would probably help people make better decisions around family. Do you think we've got the right level of maternity pay at the moment? Uh, so maternity pay varies depending on who you work for, but it is a function uh, where it's statutory maternity pay. It is a function of tax. Tax comes from people who are working. We're taking from one group of people and giving to another. This, in my view, is excessive. Businesses are closing businesses are not starting in the UK because they say that the burden of regulation is too high. So maternity pay is excessive. Far. I think it's gone too far, the, uh, too far the other way in terms of general business regulation. We need to allow businesses, especially small businesses, to make more of their own decisions. The exact amount of maternity pay, in my view, is neither here nor there. We need to make sure that we are creating an environment where people can work and people can have more freedom to make their individual well, decisions. Well, it's here nor there for people who can't afford to have a baby, isn't it? We need it? to have more personal responsibility. There was a time when there wasn't any maternity pay and people were having more babies. We need to make sure... Well, that's because that we women often had to not work. They had to stay at home. So is that the solution? That's not. That's, you're putting words in my mouth. The point I'm making, Kate, is that we have got to a point where government isn't working anymore and it's tinkering everywhere. Me giving you an exact amount of what maternity pay should be when circumstances are different everywhere is not where we're well, starting from. Maternity pay. It's, it's not where I'm starting from in this campaign. I'm talking about principles. So strange, right? She's saying, we need less business regulation. Then the host is saying, what about maternity pay? And instead of saying, no, of course, maternity pay, we need that, right? I don't think anyone in this campaign is, is, is disagreeing with maternity pay. She says, we need less regulations. Maternity pay is people working, subsidizing people who are pregnant. Like, well, yes, yes, that, that, that's good. We need that. Right, there is a declining population. The idea that now would be a time, or not, or a declining birth rate. The population isn't yet declining because of immigration, um, but there is a declining birth rate. The idea that now we would say let's cut maternity pay so people can take some personal responsibility. By the way, they had loads of babies in the 1950s, even though they didn't have maternity pay. Well, guess what? They also didn't have jobs. Really strange. She's 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 a strange person who makes strange arguments. She doesn't seem to have a, a, a particularly good political antennae. Um, Badenoch's leadership rivals um, have criticised her remarks, but here's how she defended herself today. I don't uh, regret things that I didn't say, but thank you for asking. I said maternity pay is important. If we want to fix maternity pay, we need to start with making sure that government isn't intervening in business excessively. Businesses can then pay more. So Thank do you, you think your comments have been misinterpreted? Of course they of, just, just watch of, 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 of course they have. There was a long interview, but if you're taking 30-second clips, it's very easy to misinterpret. But one of the things that I'm not going to let happen is allow other people to say things that I haven't said. That I haven't said. I mean, she did so she did say that well, there's too many regulations on business. And then the host, which is, you know, as a host is wont to do, said, Well, what about this regulation that people like, like maternity pay? And she didn't say, Of course, I like maternity pay. She said, Look. Maternity pay is a regulation on business. It's people subsidizing people having babies. Da, 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 da. Right? She, ne she never, there was never a sentence in that, I want to cut maternity pay or I want to get rid of maternity pay. But you could, you know, all of her sentences were not particularly pro maternity pay, right? She, she, was, she, she was saying the need rest regulation. And when it was put to her, what about maternity pay? She says, yes, that does fall in, within that argument. According to the 2024 unauthorized biography of Badenoch by Tory peer Michael Ashcroft, um, Badenoch actually chose not to take maternity leave from the Spectator magazine, so potentially putting her money where her mouth is, although I don't know if this necessarily speaks well to sort of her policy instincts. Um, former Spectator editor Fraser Nelson is quoted um, in that book as saying this, having discovered she was pregnant, she told me she thought it would be unfair to ask us to keep her job open while she was on maternity leave. So she resigned to have her baby. She would have been within her rights not to have done that. As an employer, I really appreciated it. We're a small company. We'd have struggled to find someone decent to fill her post as stand-in digital chief while she was on maternity leave. It was an unusual thing to do. She did it out of loyalty to the magazine and moreover out of a sense of decency, I think. Obviously, up to her, right? Up to her what to do. Um, her employer was grateful for it. Fabulous, whatever. But... If she thinks the decent thing to do when you get pregnant is quit your 
quit your job so that you don't get maternity pay, then maybe we've got some problems. Um, of course, also, it goes without saying, most prospective parents cannot afford to just quit their job to help their employers out. Um, Badenoch has previously been described as able to, quote, start a fight in an empty room, and her critics in the party say that her comments show why she's unfit to be leader, and um, that she's too easily misinterpreted or gets into too many unnecessary rows. But her backers believe her ability to speak more freely than others means that she'll cut through, or as so many conservatives desire to say the unsayable. Um, and so here's another statement um, from her this weekend, writing in The Telegraph this time. She says, we cannot be naive and assume immigrants will automatically abandon ancestral ethnic hostilities at the border, or that all cultures are equally valid. They are not. I am struck, for example, by the number of recent immigrants to the UK who hate Israel. That sentiment has no place here. On Sky, Badenoch was quizzed on those remarks. You say, I am struck, for example, by the number of recent immigrants to the UK who hate Israel. That sentiment has no place here. Um, which immigrants are we talking about? Well, people who come from countries where Israel is seen as an enemy. I remember growing up in Nigeria as a young child that people talked about Israel with a lot of positivity. What I didn't know is that in the northern part of the country, which was heavily Muslim, people spoke in a completely different way. And I also remember 10 years ago when 300 girls were stolen from school and taken away by Islamist uh, terrorists. It resonates with what happened on October 7th. And so I'm always shocked by the number of people who are unable to sympathize with those victims, people who were ripping down posters. I think that's extraordinary. Missing children's posters being ripped down because people hate the country. I don't think that has any place here. It's interesting. Uh... You know, you make a virtue of your plain speaking and so on, but you evidently mean when you say uh, the number of recent immigrants who hate Israel, you mm. evidently mean Muslim immigrants. Why didn't you just say that? Because it's not all Muslim immigrants. And this is what I do to you. I'm very careful when I speak. I've met many Muslim people who love Israel. I met them in the Middle East. When I went to Saudi, when I went to the UAE, you know, you look at the Abraham Accords, there are many people in the Middle East who want to support Israel. I remember um, reading, uh, after this uh, assassination of the Hezbollah leader, loads of uh, people Arab, from Arab countries who were actually very pleased. That man caused chaos in Syria. So it is not all Muslims, but there are some, those who buy into Islamist ideology, political Islam, they do not like Israel. <laughs> Can you imagine if we have as a condition of coming into the country that you like Israel? Right? It, it seems to be suggesting you're, you're allowed, Muslims are allowed, but only if they love Israel. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a strange thing to argue for, right? We, we love the Jews as long as they eat pork, right? It's not obviously, it's not a perfect comparison there, but it is the case, obviously, for obvious reasons that most people in Arab countries don't really like Israel very much because they've been ethnically cleansing Arab people for the last 80 odd years, right? It, it's not a surprise. It doesn't mean, by the way, that they're bigoted. In fact, I think having a general dislike of Israeli government practices is a good thing, right? I, I don't think that should count against you on the, are you welcome in this country? Um, another Tory leadership hopeful displaying his pro-Israel credentials is Robert Jenrick. He appeared today at a Conservative Friends of Israel event in a black hoodie with the slogan, Hamas are terrorists. Um, it was in green, white and red, the colours of the Palestinian flag. He's also been spotted wearing it while jogging around London. Here's what he had to say at that event today. I want this country to be the most welcoming country in the world for Israelis and for the Jewish community. And a small thing that I fought for when I was the immigration minister was to ensure that every Israeli citizen could enter our country through the E-gate, through the easy access, so that every airport and point of entry to our great country, there is the Star of David. There is a symbol that we support Israel. We stand with Israel. Ash, Britain's new border policy seems to be having a Star of David above the passport gate. Um, and asking people to pledge that they really like Israel if they look a little bit Muslim. I actually think that doesn't go far enough, Michael. <laughs> I think that saying that Israeli citizens can use the e-passport gate 
doesn't go far enough because it doesn't distinguish between those Israelis who shamefully have been against uh, their government's ongoing occupation and those who've actually put the work in to commit war crimes in Gaza. So mm-hmm. I would go further and say speedy boarding for Israeli <laughs> war criminals, you know? Just yeah. help them get on holiday that little bit faster. Um, I was, I was, I found it really funny listening to Kemi Badenoch talk because it's, it's, it's a stupid person's idea of what a smart person would say. So she's like, um, actually, you're not going to get me on being Islamophobic because I've, I've been to the Middle East and I've met Muslims that love Israel in the UAE and Saudi Arabia, who have basically dictatorships, which against the grain of popular opinion in the Arab world, embarked on a process of normalization with Israel, which then got completely scuppered by October 7th and the sort of reignition of of, of the Palestine issue in the hearts of Muslims um, across the Middle East. Um, And then when she was like, you know, there's a difference between, you know, Muslims who, who love Israel and political Islam. And I was like, wait a minute, are you saying that what's in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates isn't political Islam. Like, like none of these things make sense. And so that's why, you know, obviously the things that Robert Jenrick and Kemi Badenoch are coming out with are, you know, I, I think very hateful. I think they're coming out with a series of, of ever more hateful and also and representative of the wider electorate ideas um, so that they can appeal to, you know, the 10 geriatric headbangers who are still Tory party members. Um, but but there's a there's a humor to it and an absurdity that I can't get over. I mean, can you imagine wearing a hoodie saying Hamas are terrorists and going jogging? It just sort of it seems to me that in his ideal world, um, you know, someone would like come up to him and 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 and, and say something really horrible, or, or you know, um, you know, e- even try and commit an act of violence. Then he could be a big martyr about it. You know what I mean? But it's even funnier that that no one's reacting. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's the best vengeance you can have is just be like, you fucking weirdo. If you say something to Jenrick while he's wearing his Hamas terrorist jumpers and then he does end up getting into power, maybe they'll sort of write your name down and deport you five years down the line. Again, if you look a bit Muslim, probably that does seem to be the distinction here. Uh, it's so funny as well when, you know, fair enough, Trevor Phillips is right. You, you're talking about Muslims, aren't you? She's like, not all Muslims. I met a nice guy in Saudi Arabia. He loved Israel. Um, speeches from Badenoch, Jenrick, James Cleverly and Tom Tugendhat will take place on Wednesday so we'll hear more about their vision for the party um, then um, then next week the four candidates will face two rounds of voting among MPs until only two candidates remain um, then the vote passes to Conservative Party members who um, in case anyone's forgotten elected Liz Truss um, if Badenoch is not knocked out in the two votes by Tory MPs polling of party members um, shows that she is very likely to become the next leader of the Conservative Party. Um, Ash, who do you think Labour want um, as their opposition leader? I mean, this, it's a tough one because, like, who who can say what what Labour strategy is at the moment? Um, I'd say that Labour are maybe thinking a bit about losing votes to reform, but also with all the freebie stuff, I can't say they're taking it that seriously. I, mean, I think maybe they'd they'd be all right with going up against Kemi Badenoch because the thing is, there's nothing much between her in terms of Robert Jenrick and her in terms of head bangingness, but but she gets very tetchy. But then so does Keir Starmer, so maybe they could just get tetchy together. My opinion is that Robert Jenrick seems to be a bit more laser focused on the culture wars, right? So he talks a lot about immigration. Talks, you know, that I mean, I think lots of the Hamas are terrorists is 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 basically mm. trying to spark a conversation about Islamism and a bit of a dog whistle about British Muslims. I think that's what he's getting at. I don't know how much he actually gives a shit about Israel. I've got no idea. Uh, maybe he really does. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Um, but Badenoch seems to have more of a proclivity to start these debates in areas that you know it's not a wedge issue where anyone is on her side. Like, why the hell? would you start a debate about whether or not maternity pay is a good thing in like modern Britain right now? Because you can see with, with Jenrick, I think he's very objectionable. I think lots of the things he says are, are horrible and divisive, but they're divisive in a way where he has got, you know, a reasonable proportion of the population on his side. Whereas with Kemi Badenoch, she, she seems so scattergun with sort of like the rows she will start um, that I think Labour probably would um, enjoy that actually. 